Ah, the changing seasons. Hey, a big reason I moved from California to North Carolina so my family could actually experience this. Now, seasonality is a big thing not just in Mother Nature, but in the world of retail and sales, and it's especially true in the world of toys, because, well, toys tend to have a very specific peak during the year, and that usually starts around Black Friday and heads into December, because it's when Santa Claus comes to gun us all down and try to scare us into absolute terror. Well, in Futurama he does. I guess in the real world he just brings you presents and eats your cookies. Why is it you always eating your cookies? All right. So aside from the seasonality of holiday toy sales, there's a lot more to seasonality and the toy business. And this is directly related to two things, content and weather. And, well, a third thing tends to actually sometimes also be births, when children are born more, but we're really dealing with preschool toys and toddler products. So let's leave that one on the shelf and just look at actual play for, say, children that aren't infants, four-year-olds and up. Obviously, in hotter seasons, in summer, you're going to be able to sell more summer toys. Good luck selling a slip and slide in the middle of November. So yes, obviously, if you have a water-based toy or a pool-based toy, you're going to want to sell that during the summer. There's not very much of a market for a seasonal toy when the weather changes if that toy is dependent on actual weather changes. But this does bleed over into content. If you have a movie that's about water play, it's probably advantageous to release that in the summer. If you have a movie about snow play, it's a good idea to release that during the winter because kids want to go emulate what they're seeing in the content immediately. Now, summer movies are usually traditionally kind of more of your action adventure. It's when we get a lot of our superhero movies, we get a lot of our adventure movies, and a lot of these are very toyetic hoping that the product will then bleed over into a Christmas season. So you have your summer season, and then by holiday, when the home release, traditionally the DVD release, the VHS, or now the streaming release comes out, it'll give that product line a second life for Christmas. Of course, there's other holidays that work for toys, and sometimes this can be done through creative theming. Star Wars has done their Black Series figures with uh, different Halloween and Christmas themes for the past few years. But this is much more novelty play. The other type of seasonality is when you're directly relating to the content's ability to sell more than one season, and most content is not. So I want to use Ghostbusters as an example because, well, one, it's one of my favorite brands, and it's one that you feel like just should be on shelf all the time, right? I mean, Ghostbusters is huge in pop culture. We've had new movies every couple years. We have the classic movies, the classic animation. Well, not everything is connected that way and it really depends on the type of year and the seasonality of when that content is released. You notice that Ghostbusters isn't at market anymore, or at least it's not hanging in the major toy aisle. You can probably find some in the collector zones or, you know, on Amazon online, but mass retail, good luck finding a Ghostbuster toy. Same thing with Masters of the Universe. This is another example of a toy line that has very specific seasonality, not connected to a hot, to a, uh, weather connected to content, just like Ghostbusters. Masters of the Universe sells well when there's good content, like the Filmation series in the 80s. That's what drove Masters. To become what's called an evergreen line, a toy line that can survive at retail between content years, is really difficult. Most toy lines don't last more than six months. The average toy line, barely a year. But we tend to forget about these quickly because we focus on the evergreen lines because we're used to seeing them all the time. Your things like Ninja Turtles and Star Wars and, well, it's not always consistent. Yes, Star Wars has managed to be an evergreen brand for almost 40 years, but a lot of toys that we think of as being evergreen toys, our memories may be a little hazy. For example, G.I. Joe and Masters of the Universe are not huge at retail anymore. Yes, you can find them, 100%, but they're not what they were in the 80s, and a big part of that is because of the content. The animation for both of these brands was ginormous. Transformers is able to still have successful movies because, you know, giant smashing robots work in almost any country. But for G.I. Joe, that's also heavily tied to, you know, U.S. culture. It's a little hard on the international market, and it's one of the reasons the content doesn't do as well and why this brand is not evergreen anymore. Content is king. It's always been king. 
And for a brand to survive to evergreen status when it doesn't have current content out is very difficult. Sure, you could point to examples like in 1982, the He-Man Masters of the Universe line launched with no content. They just packed in mini-comics into the figures, which was an afterthought, after Toys R Us asked the brand managers, well, how are you going to promote this line? Oh, uh, we're going to pack in mini-comics. It was literally like that. It was made up on the spot. It wasn't part of the original plan. Now, times do change, and launching a brand using just mini-comics is not exactly something that's going to fly off the shelves anymore because, well, kids need content. And much like a uh, Jewish girl at her bat mitzvah, they need to be the center of attention and they need to know that the show is big and popular. They're not going to go hunt out something or look for obscure comic books in order to justify their toy purchases. So as long as content is constantly being churned out, like Star Wars has been successful with, through the Disney Plus, and, well, I guess they were doing movies until Solo failed. But, on the other hand, you look again, going back to Ghostbusters, and this line, without current content, has a really hard time struggling at retail. And it shouldn't, because it has a very unique play pattern. That is, conquering the ghosts under your bed, or your fears, if you will. It's one of the reasons so many toy companies were jumping when Sony said they were going to relaunch the brand. Every toy company wanted to get a big chunk of the Ghostbusters line because back in the 80s, the Ghostbusters brand was evergreen, or at least, you know, for about five, six, seven years. But that's pretty good when your average line is only six months. And it's why Mattel went way out of its way to get the Ghostbusters line. And then it turned out the new movie wasn't very aspirational. I'm talking about the 2016 one. The reason the brand did so well in the 80s is because of the animated series. The toys were not based on the movie. There were no movie toys in the 80s. It was all animated series. Because this was the constant content that was on. It's the water cooler effect, where kids are watching it and then talking about the show the next day around the slide, instead of the water cooler. So that is how seasonality can affect toys. I hope this video kind of uh, shed some light on the need for content and the fact that there are products that are just one season while content is out. When that content is gone, the season is over. I hope this video was interesting and helped shed some light on seasonality and how it's directly related to content, not just weather. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and the best way to support this channel is to share these videos, and I thank you for that. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.